The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, is the best at what it does in space. It's looking at our solar system and planets way beyond our sun. It's also trying to figure out how the universe is put together and where we fit in. Not long ago, scientists used the JWST to look at a star 120 light years away. Guess what? The telescope found signs of carbon stuff in the air of a possible water world out there. This has got astronomers really excited. So, how did they do it? This discovery is a peak at a totally different kind of planet than any we have here. It also makes you wonder if there are other places out there where life could be. Let's get into what this exoplanet find is all about. If you want to keep up with the latest space news, subscribe, like, share, and hit that notification bell. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope made a cool find on exoplanet K2-18b, a planet way bigger, 8.6 times, than Earth. The cool thing? Scientists spotted carbon stuff like methane and carbon dioxide in its air. This backs up earlier ideas that K2-18b might be a good place for life. It seems to have air full of hydrogen and oceans covering it. The first look at what's in this exoplanet's air, out in a habitable zone, was done with the Hubble Space Telescope. That gave us a better idea of what's going on there. It's important to know that K2-18b is pretty far away, 120 light-years in the LEO constellation, circling a dwarf star called K2-18. This star is in the habitable zone in its system. Exoplanets like K2-18b, sort of in between the size of Earth and Neptune, are rare around here because we don't have any like them. The idea that K2-18b has a good amount of carbon and air filled with hydrogen is cool for astronomers. A lot of think these planets might be the best place to look for life. Finding methane and carbon dioxide, but not ammonia, makes it more likely this exoplanet has an ocean under its hydrogen air. Some early studies hinted that dimethyl sulfide, a thing that life makes on Earth, could be in K2-18b's air too. Here, sea plankton makes most of it. But the proof is not strong on K2-18b and we need to look closely. More views with the JWST telescope should tell if dimethyl sulfide is really there. A scientist at the University of Cambridge said that just because K2-18b is in the habitable zone and has carbon stuff doesn't automatically mean life is there. It's also big at 2.6 times Earth's radius that its core might be buried under thick ice, like Neptune. Then, it has thin hydrogen air and ocean area. While we expect water oceans on this exoplanet, these waters might be too solid or not so good to support life. The astronomers succeeded in taking the clearest sample of a habitable sub-Neptune to date, allowing scientists to see the compounds in its air. A team member from Cardiff University explained that they got the data by looking at light from K2-18b's star as it went through the planet's air. K2-18b is a transiting exoplanet, so it dims when it steps in front of its star. NASA's K2 mission saw this planet this way. And in this time, the star's light is filtered through the exoplanet's air before our telescopes like JWST can read it. When sunlight goes through a planet air, the telescopes can read the signals. The scientists will keep studying the exoplanet using JWST's mid-infrared instrument. They want hard data to see what the climatic conditions are like. The goal is looking for signs of life on other habitable exoplanets. This breakthrough would shift how we think about the cosmos. The JWST already pulled some amazing discoveries. Astronomers found complex, smog-like molecules in a galaxy super far away. The weird part is that we're seeing this in the earliest days of known galaxies. Personally speaking, it's both inspiring and a gut check, but how we've done cosmology is changing big time because of discoveries so far out in space. The important thing about this is, these molecules, aromatic hydrocarbons, were found in a galaxy that was forming when the cosmos was barely 10% of its current age. Carbon molecules are the foundations of petroleum and coal. They're also pollution here on Earth. And the size and sophistication of this cosmic data is surprising. These huge molecules come together early in the history of the universe. That's beyond the expectations of current models. The light scientists measured has been traveling for less than 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang. 
so these aromatic hydrocarbons are the first foundations in the universe. With the Webb telescope, these molecules can still make similar detections, for almost another billion years. If we could look back even farther, could we have found even more molecules closer to the Big Bang itself? Until now, scientists using previous tech could only prove that these things existed. This stuff is amazing because the Webb telescope gives us better resolution. So we can see where these things are specifically. Additionally, the distribution of these molecules is uneven. This still has astronomers lost. This galaxy was really big and was producing carbon and oxygen like the Milky Way. But the galaxy was only a tenth of the age of our galaxy. As humans go further the unknown, our telescopes will continue to show us just how little we know. Every small revelation gets us closer to explaining all of the unknowns hidden in space. Let us know what you think about this in the comments. And also, consider subscribing to this channel with your notifications turned on. FYI, K2-18b is about 120 light years away in the constellation Leo, circling a small, cooler star called K2-18. This star is in the habitable zone, that sweet spot where planets could have liquid water. Planets like K2-18b, between Earth and Neptune's size, are rare around here because we don't have any like it. The idea that K2-18b has loads of carbon and a lot of hydrogen in its air has scientists excited. Many think these kinds of planets might be the best places to look for life. Having methane and carbon dioxide, but not ammonia, makes them think this planet might have an ocean under all that hydrogen. Some early studies even thought there might be dimethyl sulfide, DMS, there, something that living stuff makes on Earth, mostly from plankton in the sea. But the DMS thing is just a maybe for now, and we need to double check. The JWST is planning to take another look to see if it's really there. One astronomer from Cambridge made it clear that K2 18b might in the habitable zone and have carbon, but that doesn't automatically mean life is there. Its size, 2.6 times Earth's, means it could have a thick, icy layer like Neptune does. Plus, it's got a thin, hydrogen filled atmosphere and an ocean surface. Even though it's thought to have liquid water oceans, these might be too solid or not good enough for life. Still, researchers got the most detailed look at a sub-Neptune planet's atmosphere so far, so they could find out what molecules were hanging around. A Cardiff University team member said they did this by looking at starlight from K2-18b's star as it passed through the planet's atmosphere. K2-18b is a transiting exoplanet, meaning it dims the light of its star when it crosses in front of it. That's how NASA's K2 mission first spotted it. When this happens, light goes through the exoplanet's air before reaching telescopes like the JWST. As the light filters through, it leaves clues that scientists can use to figure out what gases are there. The research team is planning more tests with JWST's MIRI instrument to make sure their findings are right and get more info on K2-18b's weather. What they really want to do is spot signs of life on habitable exoplanets, which would be a game-changer for how we see the universe. Also, the JWST has made other cool finds. Astronomers using it have found these smog-like molecules way out in a far-off galaxy. It's the oldest discovery of this kind of thing in the universe. I find it both amazing and a bit strange because this stuff is changing how we think about the cosmos. The big part is that these molecules, called aromatic hydrocarbons, were found in a galaxy that formed when the universe was just a kid, about 10% of its current age. These carbon-based molecules, like the ones in oil, coal, and smog, are big and complex. The crazy bit is that they formed so early after the Big Bang, which messes with our current ideas about the universe. To give you some idea, the light from this galaxy started traveling less than 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang, which was about 13.8 billion years ago. That means we're seeing some of the universe's first steps. The Webb Telescope made this happen and will keep helping us make similar observations for almost a billion more years. If we could see even further back, would we see even more molecules, maybe even closer to the Big Bang itself? It raises some big questions about our science and how we understand the cosmos. Up to now, we could only confirm these molecules existed in old galaxies. 
but the Webb telescope's higher resolution lets us see where they are. It's also a puzzle why they're not evenly spread out in the early galaxy SP4-1847. What's amazing is that this galaxy was already the same size as ours, with as much carbon and oxygen, even though it was so young. As we explore the universe with our smarts, we're blown away by how big and complicated it is. With every discovery, we get closer to untangling the mysteries hidden in stars. As our spacecraft and telescopes keep doing their thing, it's only a matter of time before the universe gives up even more secrets. Tell us what you think in the comments. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. As the James Webb Space Telescope keeps going and giving us brand new ideas, its discoveries are changing how we look at exoplanets and other stuff in space, and making us change our understanding. This awesome telescope lets us look deeper into space than ever. It's figured out mysteries that scientists have been bugged by for a long time. Finding fancy organic molecules in distant galaxies is one way that JWST is changing what we know about how the universe started and is changing. One neat view is life or at least the parts of life might be more common than we thought. Spotting carbon goo in the air of exoplanets like K2-18b unlocks all way for maybe seeing life out there. Stuff including methane and carbon dioxide are often used with life stuff here. But just because they're there doesn't point out life. It leads to all type of research of places out here in the universe. The Webb telescope is good at checking the air makes scientists spot the bits and pieces around and good molecules that says life exist. It shows us more better looks on the planet outside. As our understanding is increasing we are have the skill to see sign of light some light is an air other in ways and the gas and marker can bring our life that may happen and be like the earth. In way we do work our plan the JWST is telling us the form and how galaxies the move to the telescope we way back we are see formation of a star way the planet moves along the ways the move we have it shows it what our own planet is like to make up and how it grew. The research made us help us find parts of the planet shows how better than we would thin as let us find our old of our planet. As we keep to research the parts in our the galaxy and our our science what are the life that may grown there on each planet. The tool has helped make the question they are asked that were humans ask. Years the go by the JWST telescope will tell so much that the tool we are looking will change must that will go we know our world now. There is a time where find planet and will shows use are the there on the universe tell you so must. As the what of are that the learn the most. James Webb tell that the science they are made. Are humans and what we use we that will keep is smart and what we ask around that we need helps. What we look at and are our goal that what is the sky what can is tell use and of the telescope keep tell great light that they keep shining to learn the universe. That the way the James Webb tell use the the universe out now that the way earth way and where we go we had that telescope know is that has change our earth and they and know is our spot and move are the earth where it is standing. The science what they tell use now are out must mind.